The Great North Run is the largest half marathon in the world, taking place annually in northeast England each September. Participants run between Newcastle and South Shields. You will see great runners like Bekele who will face stiff competition from his fellow Ethiopian, Silman Bariga who won the gold medal in the 10,000 meters at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Plus a great runner from Uganda. That is Jacob Kiplimo. Enjoy the rest of the video. So the 2022 Women's Great North Run underway, the elite field get their chance to have a clear run ahead. They'll be heading towards South Shields as is customary, but uh, without all of the masses uh, behind them, which the men will enjoy. So just this special group of women given their chance to run their own race. And Paula, that's uh, you've done this so many times. Good morning to you. Good morning. And uh, this is uh, always such a special occasion. This year we've uh, talked about why it's uh, particularly poignant, but for the women now, now that the gun's gone and the race is underway, they'll be concentrating on that. Yes, there will be, and I think there will be that moment on the start line, particularly as they take in the atmosphere there, where everybody wants to, to make sure that this day is given its, its justice in, in the right way. Uh, and as Ailish spoke about, I think the decision to go ahead was the right one. I, I think um, so many of the values that the Queen stood for and embodied that togetherness, the empathy and the human spirit comes out in the Great North Run. And this event grew under her reign into the amazing event that it is today. But you're right, once the gun goes, uh, I think it, it is all about racing and it is about making sure that um, these women race to the top of their ability. And we know there's been some question marks coming in. I think Perez Jeb Chircher has been coming back from a little bit of, of an injury, so not quite sure where she's at. Ayana has had a very long road back from the injuries, uh, to her knee injuries that she suffered, uh, and she's building towards a marathon in the near future, as is Obiri. Of exactly how they make their way to the finish at South Shields, we've just about come across the central motorway, they'll dip down underneath the uh, roads overhead and up onto the Tyne Bridge, which gives us so many great pictures. Then two mile mark as they come into Gateshead, past Gateshead Stadium at about three miles, over the Old Hewith roundabout, and then eventually make their way to Whitemare Pool, where they take a left turn down towards the coast with uh, Heben and Jarrow on their left, and then eventually they go through the Lindisfarne roundabout, turn right up John Reed Road, and now they're into South Shields proper, the 10-mile mark as they come into the nuke. A bit of a tough section of the course always, that just a little drag up and then the sharp drop onto the seafront, and then just about a mile to go to the finish line. Lovely day. The course is always one which can produce fast times. And let's hope that with uh, two of the best women of all time, well, actually three, I guess, if you, you, know, you have to put a Yana in there, despite, as Paula said, all of the years that she's really missed through injury, her performances six or seven years ago were incredible around the time of the Rio Olympics. So there they are, the three of them, joined by Hiwat uh, Gebre Kidan, who's looking forward to the London Marathon, and of course London will go back to its April date, I think uh, Gabby may have mentioned that in, uh, in an interview with Ailish, and uh, this will be the last time it's held in October, but this is a great warm-up race for some of the athletes, both in the men's and the women's races, they prepare for London as well. Charlotte Perdue, Paula, disappointment for her at the World Championships? Yes, I remember talking to her afterwards and she was very confused. She hadn't felt right. She'd struggled with her breathing. Um, and then, of course, uh, she test later tested positive for COVID. And it's been a bit of a struggle back for her. She did race in uh, the big half um, last, well, last week, week, weekend before. And um, it has, yeah, last weekend. And um, she kind of was taking steps towards her best again and, and is working her way back into the form that she would have liked to have been able to, to show in Eugene and, and looking okay so far, very early days at this stage, but definitely doing the work in that chase pack. Never have any pacemakers in the Great North Run, unlike the big marathons, so it's about the athletes themselves if we want to 
get quick times, quick races, and that, that's great. I, I always enjoy the Great North Run for that aspect. And I definitely think that having run the course before is an advantage uh, as, as well. It is a, a unique and special and great course for the Great North Run, but having that knowledge of the ups and downs and when you can really turn the screw and, and ask questions of the other athletes, I think is an advantage, and Helen O'Berry comes in with that. Well, the women have uh, just about coming across the onto the Gateshead side of the Tyne Bridge. You can see there wonderful views of uh, all of the, the bridges between Newcastle and Gateshead. If you've never been to the northeast, they are two separate places. And now onto the Gateshead side. The pace hasn't been so quick, Paul. Often the first mile here is very fast, and then it sort of settles down a little bit. But 5.8, that's about your marathon pace, that is. Uh, it's certainly a marathon pace that these women are well capable of. And I think you can tell, I was watching um, um, as Ayana and how she was running and it's almost like she's breaking she has no race plan at the moment to be going into the lead um, but it felt unusually easy for her and that's reflected in that time and I think it's partly the build up into the marathon season as well um, Perez de Chirchia and Helena Berry will be in heavy marathon training ready for that so to come out and race quickly in a half marathon does necessitate a bit of easing off which they may not have had time to do. So the women are now through five kilometres. They're heading along. They've passed Gateshead Stadium along towards Hewith Roundabout. A little bit of a pace coming on here from Helen O'Beary. It's still fairly steady, though, Paula. It's, it's actually kind of marathon pace for most of these. You probably wouldn't throw Helen into that mix, but uh, she is going to be running New York in November with Chip Churchill. And... Uh, She's just trying to pick it up. You can see they, they went through the third mile. That was the quickest of the three, five or six, and went through five kilometres in 15.56. And I think it is a measure of just how much road running has improved in, in the last few years because where we sat here, what, four years ago, and we were talking about it just below 68-minute pace, we would be saying that it was quick. Um, but because it's now so much slower than the existing world record, it is pedestrian for these women, but they are still moving at quicker than 68-minute pace. Um, and uh, as we, we see there, Helen Abiri is trying to throw in surges, and that's the second or third surge that she's thrown in. And each time, she just gets a little bit of a gap and then eases off a bit, and I just get the impression that she's testing the other women. Meanwhile, Charlotte that Purdue is doing all of this work in the chase group uh, and it really is a case of uh, her keeping her head down and, and looking up the road ahead. She could still see them through, I think through the 5k marker. She was about 20 odd seconds down on that lead group um, and she's just focusing on her own race pace at the moment and getting no assistance at all from Hayashida sitting behind her. And they're a good 25 seconds maybe behind the leaders so it will be between these four pretty sure because of the quality in that lead group as they just uh, you can see they're just leaning into this uh, incline up towards Hewitt roundabout kind of johnson local runner there and uh, as we go along the line we'll see the likes of brett robinson osaka mark scott the winner last year the local winner and wouldn't it be great if he could fulfill that performance this year would be tough wouldn't it he's got one of the greatest there Kenanisa Bekele and then he's got Olympic champions and world champions particularly in the shape of Kiplimo and Barrega we'll talk about those two once we get underway just a few seconds away from the start of not only the elite men's race but the 2022 Great North Run Ailish McColgan with the honours They are on their way now, as others still are filing in to have their opportunity. Off to the left, uh, last year we had the whole town moor act as the host for the Great North Run, where we had to change the course and finished on the Great North Road, where Mark Scott came back in resplendent style. More of an out-and-back course last year, but we're back to the familiar route in 2022. Let's be honest, Paula, what's his chances? You never know. You never know. I mean, he, I think it's fair to say he's had an up and down 
Yeah, hasn't he? Um, not helped, of course, by, by getting sick, which so many of the athletes have had to manage this year, and it's almost become part and parcel uh, of what elite athletes have to deal with on top of all of the other elements of getting yourself into shape and, and staying healthy. Um, but I certainly think the victory last year really helped him and helped him grow in confidence as a racer and feel more comfortable over this half marathon distance. Well, on the right in the orange, the hot favorite to win this, that's Jacob Kiplimo, the world record holder. He only took it by a second uh, from Candy of Kenya, but he's a phenomenal road racer. He's an unbelievable talent. First saw him really come to prominence on uh, home soil, literally, the World Cross Country Championships under 20s. He won that, and he's had to follow on many occasions Chapter guy, the Olympic champion and world champion, but he himself is now showing, certainly on the roads, he's just better than so many people, and that even Chapter guy finds it hard to hang on to him on the roads. Yeah, the surges that Helena Berry was throwing in and, and the hard work that she alone is, is doing at the front of this group have put paid to Gebri Kuden, who is back down the road. She's still in sight and she could possibly work her way back to them, but she's more likely now, I think, in the sights of Charlotte Perdue chasing her and the races down to these three. The last mile, to taking them to six miles, a slightly downhill mile, but was still covered in 4.55. So there was a, a clear picking up of the pace from Helena Beery, I think, decided I'm not running alongside Jeb Chircher anymore and just keeping the rhythm going. I'm going to put my foot down and, and make this a, a full half marathon race. Yeah, we always have to you know, be careful with some of the mile splits in the Great North Run, and, and the six mile is is kind of take you down to White Bear Pool around the corner, and then the, the 10k point you pass. And so it is a, a one of the quicker miles, but I think you're right, we're into the tough part of the race, and uh, Charlotte Perdue's on her own now, though, but she will at least have the chance to uh, aim at the uh, Ethiopian who's just dropped off that top three. Under the railway bridge. Mark Scott's just pushing on early here. That's good to see. He's probably thought, I, I thought, might be a bit quicker than this. It's been a tricky season for Mark. Picked up COVID as well. And uh, probably didn't get the performances at the championships that he would have wanted, Paula. No, I, I, I certainly think he would have gone into those championships, particularly the World Championships in Oregon, when he's based in Oregon, just up the road. In fact, moving down to Eugene with his training group now, I think he would have wanted a, a better performance than he came out with there and probably is venting a little bit of that frustration out on the race today, which can be a good thing. And he's, as I said, fueled and confident by the run last year and wanted to build on that with a retention of that type, this title. Looks like Kip Limo has decided to uh, pick things up. But for a brief moment, we had Mark Scott out in front. He's just tucked in between, be behind the two great stars, Kip Limo and the Olympic champion, Berega. So Mark tucked nicely in the group there. The uh, pace has been OK, nothing too silly. And Kip Limo just now moved to the front. Berega in his first series half marathon. That is Gateshead Stadium. How's the Diamond League last year? So many great athletic moments over the years. You've got to have a good memory, though, to remember some of them. He says, looking at Paula, she's looking at me. I've got a good memory. How's your memory doing? <laughs> I, it's, it's OK, actually, certain things. A bit selective at times, but not too bad. And the, and the bowl there, the Gateshead Bowl, was the scene of uh, great cross-country championships as well, including the World Cross-Country Championships, which I mentioned that uh, Kip Limo has attended with such uh, great success. Barrega, you, well, his range is incredible. We actually just saw a clip there, didn't we, of, of uh, him winning the World Indoor Championships ahead of Mark Scott. He's somebody who, I rem you might not remember this, Paula, but uh, we were asked, I think Gabby asked us back in, the world indoors when they're held in Birmingham to name somebody to watch out for over the next few years. And I actually picked Solomon Berega. I think he'd won the silver medal on that occasion. He was very young then, but what a career he's had. Yeah, and a little bit perhaps be, been overlooked, uh, but he's, he's, a, he's a beautiful runner to watch, isn't he? He's very relaxed, economical, um, and almost 
looks as though it's effortless uh, in his style. And Kananisa Bakula also looks that, but looks laboured running alongside him because he is just, well, he's, he's a younger generation as well. But he, he's, it just seems that easy and that fluid to Borrego. And almost imperceptibly there, he's moved ahead of, of the group without appearing to, to pick up the pace. But from that overhead shot looking down, you see that he has started to open up gaps that the others at the moment have not responded to. Well, not much to choose between the elite women either. Is the, the three of them still there? Paris Cheche just checking her watch. They're on the John Reed Road. They'll be approaching the 10-mile mark. I think they may have, they will have just passed nine. There's always someone running in the opposite direction. Did you see the <laughs> guy in the central reservation there? Anyway, Paula, what about these three? Uh, Helen's been the one who's been trying to force the issue. Ayana's looked tired, perhaps not tired, look, looked as though maybe the pace was hurting earlier on, but she looks very comfortable there. I do. I, th I yeah. think that Ayana has, has grown in confidence and is looking better the further we get into this race. She definitely looked like she was struggling to hold on as Helen was throwing in those early surges but now she's moved alongside her and it's now Perez Cipcirce who looks as though she is the one who is kind of struggling to, to stay with this pace the most that gap back to Gebrekeden has not grown anymore either so she's not completely out of it although it does the camera lens does foreshorten that distance a little bit uh, but it's definitely I think Helen calling the shots well, that gap hasn't got any bigger and in fact has shortened a little bit for the very reason that actually that, that 5k section was slower than the previous one. The second one was the quickest 5k section. This one was slower. You do have to climb, kind of climb through the John Reed Road a little bit, but she'll realise that this is not over for her at this point. No danger behind. So Gabby Kiran has got the chance perhaps to look at those three ahead. Another one preparing for London, but she's got, what, about 10 seconds between her and the leaders. It is a big gap and growing back to that chase group led by Mark Scott. Yeah, a few athletes in there, including uh, Brett Robinson. I'll just check who else is in that group. But at the front here, look at uh, Ken is doing. Uh, I think the, whole, the thing, I mean, you, we both know this, your brain keeps telling you, you know, yeah, you, I need to go with this because that's a competitive instinct. That's what you've done all your career. Uh, so you can't help yourself, even though you think you're, you're, somebody might be thinking, oh, maybe you're not in shape to do this. But he's having a go. He's trying to hang on. Yeah, and I think it's, it's very hard to, to overrule that instinctive signal coming from your and command coming from your brain to to go with it because you're absolutely right your brain and your mind knows what to do it's just that the body isn't quite as able to respond as it used to be but sometimes just sometimes that those little signals can connect a little bit better and he can just run a lot better than he is expecting to do on, on the day and so in trying to hang on i don't think it's a bad move at this point he might find himself a little bit stranded between those two groups but he is at the moment still maintaining contact and drafting a little bit off the the coattails of kiplimo and Borrega. now developments in the women's race paula they've slowed so much that we've now got four well we did say that gabriga Gebrika then was not entirely out of it and she that gap wasn't growing and indeed as they have slowed uh, and so for the ninth mile they went through in 518 they went through the 15 kilometer point in 4740 um, so having picked it up to kind of an average of around about 5758 with a couple of much quicker miles thrown in they have now slowed it back down in the 10th mile 526 which is exactly why Gebrika then has, has caught them up she hasn't picked it up she maintained her pace but I think there's a little bit of, of looking around going around there and maybe Helena Beering not as willing to keep the pace going and indeed Gebrekeden just maintains the pace that she was running at and goes straight to the front of that group and is looking around in, in confusion now and they're almost crossing across the road because she doesn't want to be leading um, but nobody else seemed willing to do it and finally Perez Jepchircha is the one who says okay I'm gonna continue the zigzags across <laughs> No, happy it's issue, comical. Paris. Do you know what's it? The last time I actually watched her run in, in person was it was the Boston Marathon, which ended up a really close finish. You know, there was a lot of surging uh, in the last couple of miles. 
and uh, she came out on top then. So you know, for the other three, they m they must know that your know, Paris can close quickly. But then you've got Helen O'Meary, who's one of the greatest track uh, runners that we've ever seen. 5,000, 10,000, multiple world champion, never sadly won the Olympics. But uh, Helen at her best could do that. But she's in marathon mode now, marathon training. And um, you know, whether or not she's got the legs to do it. And look, all of a sudden, it's the uh, Ethiopian contingent who who move quickly and uh, Gabriel Kidan who's been waiting and waiting trying to catch and it's, I think that's what happens when you're in that pace Paula and you catch a group that's running much slower than you, you my coach used to always tell me just keep going Charlotte Perdue not that far behind Charlotte is pretty much stuck to her own pace pretty well so she's in fifth place it's been a lonely run for Charlotte Perdue she uh, very quickly extricated, extricated herself from the rest of the field, but was never on with the top four. And I think at one point she was maybe hoping, we were thinking that perhaps Gebre Kidam would come back towards her, but the opposite has happened, but she's still running pretty well. Right, spread across the road here, Salomon Borrega, the Olympic champion on the left-hand side, Kip Limo, the world record holder and world champion the world record all in the half marathon distance and then one of the all-time greats in the middle in the white and the red Kenanisa Bekele of Ethiopia still there with these guys it's been a little bit up and down the 10k split 28 54 well, that's about a minute down on course record but course records pretty quick but these three locked together and Kip Limo again using the hills. Every time he's got a small rise or a little bit of a hill ahead of him, he just picks up the pace a little bit. And I just get the impression that he's he's testing the other two on that. And each time it is Kenanisa Bikila who struggles to, to go with that rise, rising of the pace the most. But then he works himself back into it. And I think you're absolutely right. The further we get into this race and the longer that Kenanisa Bikila is still in there, the others have to factor him in as a danger. Just that extension over that rise over York Avenue. I think it's uh, the little flyover over there. And Berega and Kiplimo looking comfortable. Both of them running well. Berega in his first serious half marathon, picking the Great North run. That gives you an idea of the stature in which this race, or the stature it has in that world road running. Kiplimo was expecting Cheptegai, his uh, illustrious teammate, to be here. Sadly, Cheptegai had to pull out during the week, the Olympic champion. But Kip Limo probably would have started his favourite anyway, even if Cheptegai had been here. He's just so good on the roads. He's got a lovely action. I need to talk a little bit more about him uh, as we go on, because uh, we've got the women uh, heading towards the finish. Uh, we're back to three, Paula. The three big names now contesting this. Don't be fooled by Helen O'Beary, everybody. She rocks and rolls anyway, but she can turn a great turn of, or can find a great turn of pace. Ayana uh, can do so as well, but Helen O'Beary is the one who's forcing it. But in road races, Jet Churchill often finds the way to win. Yeah, and it's it's timing it right here, isn't it? And this is where, again, I think knowing this stretch along the seafront is an advantage uh, for Helen O'Berry, and she so many times times that finish to perfection. Ayana will be thinking in her mind, do I need to make this a long, long push for the home? They are inside the last mile now, and it was a pickup in that 12th mile from a 5.25 where they were messing around and exchanging the lead back to a 5.13, and that has put pay to then again and she's seen that gap grow and you just sense don't you that it, it's, it is coming down to a little bit of a sprint between Ayana Onabiri or is Jep Chirchir just settling in and just waiting waiting and waiting until she can see that finish line two Olympic champions Ayana Jep Chirchir one on the track one in the marathon and then Helen Obiri the defending champion multiple world champion 20 kilometers just past 64 minutes just out just over that they've all decided that it was tactics today it's not going to be an incredibly quick time it's quick by many people's standards but not so much by the standards that these three are capable of all of them preparing for big marathons ahead in the next few weeks but the task now is 
who has got the timing, the speed, the strength to make sure they make the move at the right time to win this. As I mentioned, Jep Cherchia often looks as though she can't sprint, but is just hanging in there. And Ayana now just starting to try and move away. I think she would like to try and make the long run for home if she can. I think even at her best, Ayalma Zayana would have feared the finish of Helena Beery and she would have wanted to make it a long run for home. So now as she's on, as we mentioned, that road back to her very, very best and she looks around. I think that was a little bit of a test. There'll be another couple of tests if she can find it to try and draw them at least clear of Jep Chirchir here and then she will have to get time it right and have to make Helena Beery hurt so that she can not unleash the finish that she is so well known for even when she's tired and even when she's raced a lot and she's got those marathon mi miles in her legs Helena Beery can find a finish yeah well running there's a bit of a saying isn't there that, that a, a good Ethiopian will always outkick a good Kenyan but it did not win Helena Beery's case so many times she's managed to produce the goods and she's trying hard here, but do not write off Jeff Churchy. Ayana's there moving across because they'll come down the right-hand lane as they're looking at it, and that's where they're being directed. And Helen O'Beary's now got Jeff Churchy right on her shoulder. Ayana a meter or so behind, just uh, 400 meters to go. And this is what Helen O'Beary knows best. She's the best track runner out of these three. And now we see suddenly Ayana cannot respond and, and cannot go with that. There it is, that look over her shoulder. She won't be able to figure, I don't think, in this anymore. And it is now down to can Helena Beery shake off Jeff Chirchir. Ayana hanging on. She's only a meter behind the single file now. Helena Beery looks to see is the danger. Yes, there is. She still hasn't got rid of both of them. Jeff Church is closest, but Helen's just got a couple of meters now. And that's going to increase because she hits the 200 to go. And the track specialist gets those arms moving, driving forward. And Helen O'Beary, as she did last year, just finding a little bit extra. She wants to hang on to this title. It'll be great preparation as she heads towards the New York Marathon in November. And Helen O'Beary, despite not feeling so well earlier in the week, has recovered well and has waited and waited and has unleashed the sort of finish that is her trademark. Helen O'Beary is the Great North Run champion 2022. Paris Jeff Church here takes second place. Ayana third, the two Olympic champions having to give way to the speed and the strength that Helen O'Beary is able to muster in the closing stages. And a good performance in fourth place from Hewat Gebri Kidan, who just, when she got back to them, as soon as the surge came, couldn't go with it a second time. Charlotte Perdue will be the next to finish. She isn't too far behind that winning time there, 67.05. And although Charlotte's personal best time has already passed, she might be heading for a season's best, where she's uh, she only just uh, dipped under 70, 69.57. But uh, might just be outside that as well. May that be heading for time around about 70 minutes. Good solid run from. Charlie though and she's getting lots of support here from the crowds that are gathering they'll be here for a good few hours at the finish at South Shears the crowds just get bigger and bigger and bigger so less than 400 to go been a lonely run for a Paula but she stuck to her task well she has and this is what Charlotte does very very well it doesn't matter whether she has people to race and to to help her with the work she's very good at, at staying focused on her race and putting the best performance that she can out on the day and I'm just looking back down the road behind her and I think is that Amy Eloise Markovitz is just approaching the 400 meter to go banner um, so she's not going to make any inroads on, on this gap to Charlotte Perdue but she has also maintained her pace on her own very well through this race I think it's good for Charlotte to take this step back towards racing at the top level and to kind of put those demons from Eugene behind her yeah disappointment for her the world championships for the reasons which Paula alluded to earlier but you then do exactly that, you get going again and you set your new targets, you set your new goals, you start to build your programme back and this is a, a good first step back for Charlotte Perdue. Two big years ahead, World Championships next year in Budapest and the Olympic Games in Paris. Those are two tempting marathons at the major championships for European athletes. So just outside 70 minutes in fifth place, 
and there's that smile and that she will tuck that one away use that as a platform i'm sure to build on into this winter and the targets for next year and in a debut run Amy Eloise has finished well here as uh, you know, again just keep running at your pace just you know, people come back to you and you keep ticking people off and this is going to be well she may well be under 71 minutes Paula yeah and I think uh, as you said it, it's a it's a very encouraging debut on its own but on top of a very 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 busy summer of racing to to close it off in this way I think is impressive for Amy Eloise and will help her going into the winters and preparing for next year and included Diamond League 5,000 metres on Wednesday night, although th that was always an odd one. It's a hybrid between a track and a, <laughs> and a road race. So well done to her and her debut at the Great North Run and at the half marathon distance inside or just outside 71 minutes. Sixth place. Approaching mile 10, or the, no, they haven't quite gone through mile 10 yet. They've just gone the, the roundabout of the halfway along John Reed Road, if you like. They've got the hospital on their left. It'll be approaching, and the 10 mile mark is uh, just ahead. So Kip Limo with a good lead. It's been a little bit up and down, hasn't it, this race? But I, I think if you were kind of trying to predict what would happen, this, this would have been the script. Yeah, I think he was waiting, waiting, waiting. And then when he made his move, he's just put his head down and just eyes straight ahead and just keep pushing the pace on. So they went through 15 kilometers. He went through 15 kilometers in 42, 44 and had a four second lead over Brega at that point. And that lead seems to have grown slightly since then as well. So it is now, I think, all about Jacob Kiblima and how fast can he finish this race? How fast can he run today? Kenanisa Bekele, again, well, I, I think he's going to be solid in third, although there is a charge behind Osaka and Mark Scott following. They may be able to see him along this long straight road. There you can, there, definitely. That gap's not very big now between Bekele and uh, I think it's Osaka. Yeah, you can see that, and more importantly, they can see, uh, and they can pull on that uh, and work towards him. So there is the blue figure and the orange shoes of um, Suguru Asako trying to, to make inroads on the great Kenanisa Bekele. Uh, and at the front, they have Jacob, Jacob Kiplimo has gone through 10 miles in 45-44. So that last mile it covered in 425. If you contrast that to 445 of Borrega, that's why the gaps are opening up as quickly as they are. Well, the leader is a long, long way ahead. He's through 11 miles now, Jacob Kiplimo, and he has the chance to become the first Ugandan to win the Great North Run. Stephen Kipritich finished third. Had so many different nationalities have come to the event and indeed have won it as well. Didn't have a good start the season. You know, he had, I remember he had to pull out of the... Um, the Diamond League, uh, which was held in Eugene before the World Championships, he wasn't going well there. And then his first big race, I think, he was going to run in Paris, then he came to Stockholm. And he was beaten at the time by somebody we didn't know too much about, Dom Dominic uh, Lobali, who's uh, actually had gone on to have a very, very good season. And we were thinking, oh, is Kip Limo going to be any good this year? And then he turned up at the World Champs and ran brilliantly and has carried that on. And I think his season is just getting better and better. And we're seeing evidence of that here today. As we look at Selim Brega, who's also had an extremely long season and is sticking to the task and trying to, I guess, keep in sight somewhere in the distance, Jacob Kiplimo, and you just get the impression as he looks over his shoulder that there's no danger, really, I don't think, coming from back behind the road. Behind him, it's all happening ahead, and Jacob Kiplimo stepping out from that shadow uh, of chapter guy and kind of really establishing himself as somebody to be watched in his own right it's a big gap and it's one which uh, will just continue to grow because i think Berega, you could tell just looking behind and there's no danger either for him behind because kenaniza bikeli is going to be fortunate to hang on to third i think and, and i very much doubt he will but the others are running quicker behind him as elvis 
We, we used to have Jarrow Elvis, and just a word about um, Jarrow Jim as well, who was just uh, one of those great local characters who took part in the Great North Run over uh, so many years, sadly not with us anymore. Kip Limo. Not sure he heard what Elvis was singing, but it may, maybe it was some sort of inspiration for him. Anyway, away he goes, heads towards. He'll be just get a, a whiff of the sea from where he is now. And then a, the sharp drop down at Marsden, and then that left turn. Yeah, a look behind, but I don't think it was a worried look behind. I think it was probably more of a, a look behind to see, although he's still continuing to do that, but just a look behind to see what is going on and what has been the effect of the upping of pace that he laid down. And he, he's still maintaining that. He has steadied back to around about 4.30 um, for that previous mile, but he has now only got two miles to go. And the only racing he's doing now is against the clock. I think this man in second is well beaten in second. Yeah, it seems to have got his head down a little bit more then, moving a bit better than he seemed to the last time we were looking at him. Maybe sensing, hey, there's not that far to go, I can push on now. Uh, you know, when you're running your first half marathon, it's a, it's a little bit unusual in the sense that he's got these big gaps. Often, you know, you, you, when people keep moving away from you, it, it can be quite uh, soul destroying. But as we look at that beautiful view there, it's coming down to Marsden. But he's got no, he, he doesn't have those reference points, so maybe he's just uh, getting reinvigorated again because he's running with himself and thinking, no, I don't feel too bad. Yeah, and I think seeing those those mile markers and for a track runner always to see that you're approaching the final couple of miles is a very welcome sight. And this particular drop now onto the seafront is something that you kind of have to learn to, to master in road racing. I think we've talked about it lots of times here at the Great North Run. If you hammer too hard down the hill, and it is tempting because it's easy to kind of let yourself go and really hammer down, it is tough on those quads that have already absorbed a lot so far in this race so there is a certain technique to just making sure that you kind of absorb the impact down i have to say the, the shoes probably do help the improvement in in shoe technology over the last couple of years means that it's less of a factor that that drop hurts a little bit onto the seafront and then it is a long run now down to that finish he's just passing the 12 mile point Borrega. A good, what, 30 seconds, maybe more, 45 seconds or so behind. Mark Butler, a statistician, just pointing out that uh, they're running 20 seconds a mile slow. They've slowed to around about the 450 pace. The athlete's behind him in second, third, fourth. He's still knocking out miles around 430 there, thereabouts. And again, when you do drop down the finish, yeah, <laughs> the legs are tired and uh, you just have to be a little bit careful, as Paula was mentioning. But Kip Lima, I don't know what he's looking behind for. Nothing happening behind him. He can just concentrate on finishing strongly. It's almost like he thinks he didn't see properly. There he checks his watch again as well. I don't think he can perhaps believe that he broke away as easily uh, as he has done. And he's so far clear that he really has no need whatsoever to look behind. And it, it is true that the crowds along here are so great and so thick, so loud, that it is hard to hear the footfall of anybody should they be close to you. But there's nobody in sight. So when he's looking behind, he's not getting a view of anything at all. And I really think now he can afford just to focus on the road ahead of him and just to enjoy this victory here today. He still looks as though he's, he's not even moved into his top gear, doesn't he? He still has another gear were he to be challenged in any way and still very, very fluid and comfortable to, to look at. Well, he's looking at his watch and uh, he's heading for just under the hour, perhaps or around the hour mark. And I was just looking on the historical results Paul Koskai was the first one to run under the hour 20 years ago. So it was exactly 20 years ago when Paul Turgat, the great, sorry, sorry Paul Koskai, uh, Paul Turgat won the year before that. Paul Koskai in 2002 ran 59.58. That's the first time he broke the one hour mark in the Great North Run. <laughs> Here's what he's doing, Paul. This is, this is my theory. He's imagining someone is chasing him. Uh, to make himself go a bit quicker, checking his watch, you imagine, as, as though it was happening, so that, so that spurs him on to a hard last kilometre or so. But the truth of the matter is, Borrega is way behind. But if he's imagining, he doesn't need to look then, does he? Because it's all in his imagination. No, he goes, you know, oh, okay. Go along with me, 
But uh, for whatever reason, he's uh, trying to make himself... Go yeah, I just love him running as well. You know, he he's trying to make himself run hard, I was going to say, but he he's got that lovely style. That that's why he's good on the road. It's a different action, isn't it? It is, uh, and despite the fact that he is losing energy, looking behind, even checking his watch when there isn't really a need to, if you cover his legs, his body is very, very steady, very stable. There's no excess energy being lost. And in contrast to that, to the very efficient, very effective style of Helen Abiri, but it, it's very different. And I think this one is very conducive to running extremely quickly on the roads and indeed on the cross country. So Jacob Kiplimo went to the Olympic Games as the youngest ever competitor for Uganda in 2016 when he was just 15. He's a good kicker if he needs to be, but this year at the Great North Run, he won't have to do that. He talks a lot about uh, he lost his father himself when he was very young and had an upbringing which he said taught me about appreciating everything. And he says the running has given him an opportunity that many don't get and he's decided he would grasp it with both hands and he's done it incredibly well over the last few years and it just continues to get better and improve he's still a young athlete he's still an improving athlete when you think he's only 21 he'll be 22 in a couple of months time one more last look at the watch there's such a great future ahead for him he's already the world record holder at the half marathon distance he's never won the great north run before but he's heading towards that now, and he can enjoy these last few moments with the huge crowds that we'll have at the finish line. And indeed, he's doing that, a wave to the crowd. That's good to see. You know what I think he might be trying to do? He might be trying to time it exactly on the hour. So that's why he's looking behind and he's checking his watch so much, and maybe he'll just slow down and make sure he crosses exactly on that hour. I think he's just soaking in the moment. You can see he's looking around, huge smile on his face. He's a real engaging character, and... He certainly enjoyed his first ever Great North Run. It's ended up in victory for Jacob Kiplimo of Uganda. Just under the hour, wonderful performance from him. He is the best in the world at this at the moment, and he's shown it here to great effect against some of the world's best behind him. But when he put his foot down, there was no question that he'd continue to go away. And he can enjoy the victory moments that uh, go with his run now. He looks behind. Selman Baraker is still not coming. Here he is. First ever half marathon. He'll run quicker than this, Paula. He'll, in, in his future years, he'll time it better in terms of his preparation, I'm sure. Yeah, and I don't think really at the foremost of his mind would he have expected to be able to beat Jacob Kiblimo here today, as you said, the world record holder in the half marathon distance and really taking so many strides forward this season. Berega maybe has that in the future, but not today. And it, it's been a great debut performance from him as well. And, and just a glance behind in, in that previous shot. And we could see Kenanisa Bikila in the background, but also Suguru Osaka. Berega takes second place in his first half marathon. He won't be too bothered about the time. He knows, as Paula said, that he's beaten by uh, the greatest around at the moment, but perhaps one of the all-time greats. Kenanisa Bekele has rallied in the closing miles. The competitive spirit is still there in the 40-year-old champion. So he takes third place right on the 61-minute mark. Osako, who chased him hard, looked as though he was going to manage to get ahead of him, couldn't hang on to him, still got that bit of pace at the end. And just looking at the stats that Mark Butler had provided us before the race, the fastest ever 40-plus half marathon was 60-41 by Haile Gebris Lassie in the Great North Run in 2013. So Kenanisa Bekele has just missed out on being able to take that record from the great Haile Gebris Lassie. That looks like Brett Robinson coming in. We were hoping that Mark Scott might have hung on to fifth, but Mark certainly committed himself, didn't he? He really had a go early on. In fact, he led in the first couple of miles and then has found that it's been a, a hard season for all. Robinson himself preparing for London. And uh, what is it, three weeks today? And that's a solid run from him. It's going to be right on the 62-minute mark as he sees the great three great championships.